Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the School Manager Part 9. In this week's training, I'm going to show you how to create an amazing dynamic drop down list with icons. I'm also going to show you how to create this really cool color palette and set a class color. We're also going to be able to load classes simply on selection and also load both active and inactive classes. We're going to make this fully functional this class including new classes and changes automatically being updated it's going to be a great training i cannot wait let's get started All right, thanks so much for joining us today. It's gonna to be another incredible training as we build the best school manager in Excel you have ever seen. This week, our focus is on classes. Like mentioned before, this is a sample because we're gonna be doing all from scratch. I'm gonna show you every step of the way, every line of code, every function, every formula, and every conditional format in front of you. This is a sample that I, so I can show you exactly what we're gonna do exactly. I'm gonna create this drop down list. It's gonna be dynamic. That means as you add icons, it's automatically gonna be included, automatically gonna be built on the fly. And all we need to do is just select it and then it's gonna change that icon just like that. And also, of course, we're gonna say a class color. We'll be able to set any specific class color just by selecting this and having it pop up. I've also got, gonna show you how we can build this dynamic list based on active and inactive classes, selecting on the list going to load it we're going to be able to delete the class add a new class save a class cancel the new class if we want we're going to be able to load it and also we'll be able to select days that this class is going to appear along with times and of course we're going to get to as much as possible as we can so i hope you appreciate it i'm going to put this away right now this is our sample we don't need this anymore so i'm going to close that out we're going to focus right where we took off last week and that is the school manager part nine this basic one here this is it nothing here so we got a lot to cover if you do like these trainings this app application is absolutely free all you need to do is click the links down in the description either with Facebook or email and we'll get that sent over right to you it's everything's for free if you do like to support us a few things I ask all you can do is just click subscribe on the channel below and don't forget to click the notifications icon bell that will ensure that you get these trainings each and every Tuesday it's absolutely free whether it's one or two hours it's a master class on how to create your own Excel application and if you do like creating your own Excel applications I've got an incredible mentorship program for you it's gonna take you from your basic Excel VBA skills all the way up into how to launch your own applications for passive income and everything in between whether we're defining the application whether we are designing it or whether we're developing it or deploying it everything is included in that and that's myexcelmentor.com myexcelmentor.com if you want to learn more i'll put the link down in the description for you all right let's get started we've got so much to cover we don't have time to waste so here's what i want to do i want to build out this classes there was a few small items in the admin so i'm going to take care of those first before we get to it just a few small things now inside the icon i noticed there was a small issue on the icon let's go ahead and look at the classes and lessons here we've got some icons if i delete all of these icons and then we add them again it's going to create a little bit of a bug and it's because this notice that they're group and that's great we want them group but if we delete them all it leaves the group empty let me show you what i mean i'm going to go ahead and just click on deleting of these icons and then we'll delete them all and then we'll show you the issue and then we'll go ahead and get that fixed up and there's just two issues and then we're going to get right to the classes notice first first of all the icons don't delete okay so that's an issue right there we're going to fix that and also i want this delete icon and of course if we switch tabs it's going to possibly create a bug here notice as soon as we delete all these icons it'll create a bug notice we still have the class group so if i delete that let's go ahead and go into that i just want to update those two small issues and then we're going to get to the class so we're going to go into the visual basic and we're going to go directly into the admin miscellaneous first this is just a very simple thing right so we're going to scroll down here we're going to take a look at the admin delete icon notice we put logo here that's wrong right i really want to focus on icon so we want to we want the word icon when we create these right when we create this these we call them we give them a specific name this is the when we create it first of all we're doing last time we created it basically creating it and giving it a name called icon so when i delete it i got to make sure to, to delete it using the same name icon and that's why they didn't delete okay fair enough okay but let's go ahead and when we delete all those it's going to also create an issue and i'll show you that and then i'll show you exactly how to fix it so i'm going to manually delete these icons i'm going to add to then i'm going to delete them and we're going to show you exactly how that happens so i'm going to add a name i'm just going to put uh, let's say chemistry anything because i'm going to be deleting it in just a second or two and i've got some uh, on my desktop here so i'll go ahead and pull those up some just 
just icons here and then chemistry and I'll just do one okay so now we've got them grouped and what we want is want that called class group and that's correct when I delete that one it's now deleting the icon properly and notice that there's a bug right so if we take a look at this bug it's looking why is it looking it's looking for something right take a look in the shape group it says add icon button right it's the shape group is add icon button but it's looking for additional shapes there is no additional shapes right there's nothing left right it's only only thing we have is this add icon button so it's supposed to group but it's not grouping anything right so what i want to do is i want to make consideration when there's no icons at all then all i want to do is group this with something well, what am i going to group it with i'm going to group it with that little delete icon that's called delete icon button i'm just going to group it with something because i don't want to rename this i like the icon but i need to group this with something and we need to group it together why do we need to group it? because when i switch tabs here right it's going to look for something notice it's looking for something called class group if that class group isn't found it's going to create a bug so the best thing to do is just simply create that group right which we want to do we want to create that group i want to create it right here called class group but i cannot create it so all we need to do is just make a small consideration in this code right here so how are we going to do that well, what I want to do is I want to find out if the shape group is if there's no icon. So how are we going to do that? Well, notice this shape group was called add icon. Remember, there was nothing here, nothing here for each icon and shapes. There's nothing inside here. There was no icons. So that means this shape group, the only thing it is, is called add icon button. So that's what I want to do. I want to find out with the if statement. So we can do it right here. If here shape group is equal to again add icon button then no icons so there's no icons and we just need to group it again so icons else then there's icons so again let's go ahead and add this so this so this is if contains icons this part contains icons then we're going to write some code when it doesn't contain icons so this part would not contain icons. So what do I want to do? Well, basically, I'm just going to add to this shape group, and I'm going to add something else. So let's call, let's call it with dot shapes. We're going to focus on that dot shapes, and then dot range. I want to do the range, and now I'm going to create an array just like we did earlier, but array. And then what do I want inside this array? Of course, it's going to be the add icon button. I want to, I want to include that add icon button make sure we get the shape name right and what else i also want to include the delete icon button it's just it's just a way that we can add it together so that way we can create a group even without icons delete icon button there's a few different ways to do that but why not just group them together okay dot group and what am i going to do with this group i'm going to assign it a name i'm going to make sure we assign it that name that it's looking for called class group okay, it's the same name. and also i want to do the placement placement is going to be equal to XL and then just move but don't size remember move but don't size we don't want to size that okay so that's it so that's all we have to do if there's no icons so this is the this is the sort icons this sorts icons automatically so when we delete or we make a change to any icon it automatically sorts it so if I run this macro again let's take a look at this still so let me reset that still looking for that group so if I run this now it's going to create that group let's take a look inside that group here now we've got a group here this is just what I want class group so that's going to be hidden of course when we go into the hidden let's go ahead and scheduling and then go back and make sure that it's placed of course we need to place it properly let's go ahead and replace this right about up here where it belongs here and I don't want to make that delete that deletes going to be we don't want to show it so when we select anything else the delete goes away so that's just where I want so let's take a look at it now let's add another icon make sure it's working correctly and then we'll delete that icon and making sure that it is properly okay so now we've got it so now let's take a look our group includes that perfect deleting it click OK okay perfect yeah, the only other thing I want to do is pretty much hide that the hide that this one delete icon I want to just we don't need to display that right because it's not hidden once we delete it so won't we add that in here right here so notice that we have let's pull close this one out and go back into the admin miscellaneous here the one we were working on here right here so we created that so then what I want to do is dot shapes and then the delete icon dot visible equals MSO false so we're gonna hide that one there's no reason to save it. now that every time we select on it it hides automatically notice it hit automatically which is fine but now we've got it hidden great okay that's just the way I want it all right so that's all the issues that we had in the admin 
and it's hidden good just the way I want it okay it's interesting you see it when when we drag we can see it it's kind of nice we can see that even though it's hidden when we let go it's hidden so it's nice that we know it's grouped together this is only going to be grouped together of course when we have no icons let's go ahead we do need to add icons because we're going to be creating a uh, drop down list so we certainly need a set of icons so let's add them back in chemistry and then we'll add them in I won't be deleting them this time chemistry and then we'll do another one called computer because we're going to be creating a dynamic list of icons it's really cool I haven't yet done that in any kind of a training as far as the way we're going to be doing it now so it's going to be really cool something very unique and also we want uh, let's take a look at math class we've got to have math that helps for our being a developer and I've got a math and of course uh, here and then history one of my worst subjects failed that don't tell anybody okay click okay on the history and we're gonna put down a history and then we do need let's see what else do we need beyond history uh, photography and English oh English that's right add icon let's English and click okay and then we'll select the English here uh, let's take a look here and then we'll do one more we'll do one more and we'll call this uh, photography so because I have a, a photography clicking OK we'll select that photography icon and then we're good we're good we don't need to worry about the icons anymore okay everything's grouped prop properly and that's just the way I want it and when we switch tabs it's hidden when we switch back it's displayed okay I'm gonna save our work always save our work and then we're gonna continue on now what we're gonna do actually before I go into the classes what we really need to do is we need to create some named ranges we need to create a lot of named ranges because there we need them inside the classes look we have um, terms we have teachers we have subjects we have all these you know room location here we've got all these named ranges that I'm gonna need so why don't we add them in right now while we're inside the admin okay so this is gonna be basically a master class on dynamic ranges you after this you're gonna learn a lot because we're gonna create so many of them okay the first thing what I want to do is create rooms right I'm making sure that I didn't create it before I'm gonna call it rooms there's nothing here called rooms so click new rooms and it's all it's really rooms and locations but we're going to keep it short and the first thing i want to do is equals offset okay. then i'm going to select the header row the header although we're going to exclude it but i need it included in case there's no data comma one that means one row down because i don't want to include that comma comma no rows no columns over count a we're going to count them again i also want to start out the header row and go all the way down to last possible in this case row 27 close the parentheses subtracting one because i don't want to include that header comma one meaning for one close the parentheses okay if we expand this a little bit we can see the entire formula here okay click ok and click tab and we're just going to surround the dancing ant surrounds the data perfect that's exactly what i want okay now we can either copy and paste this or do it all let me copy and paste this i'm going to control c i'm going to click new and we're going to call this subjects that's for the next one now all we need to do is just change the column this one's going to be column am i'm going to paste that in there instead of al we're going to go to am so in three instances here i'm going to change it to am and then am that's all i have to do again we should always double check tabbing out using the tab key shift tab backing in checking and make sure that those things okay good we're uh, good with that click OK and click new again we want class type class underscore type pasting that in again this time we're focused on column a n so we just need to make that change right here now if you want to use your arrow keys use f2 once we click f2 we can then use the arrow keys it took me a while to realize that thank you Bill Jones for that uh, hint a n and then um, let's go ahead n and then another a n so that's going to be covered for the class types tab out tab in making sure we got that covered clicking OK and the last one we'll do attendance status although we're not going to need that inside classes but we will when we do that we might, we're already here let's call it attendance and then status we're not going to need that inside classes but we will when we do the scheduling so it's important we might as well do it a o and then again a o and then a o okay so that's the three changes we need to make everything else is the same a few more that we didn't do need to do okay click okay now what else do we have to do we have let's say scheduling settings that's good we want terms right i want to put some terms in there that's going to help us understand the from and to date and so why do i want to do that let's take a look at back inside the classes when i select a term here i want that from date and to date to auto populate based on whatever i've set up inside the admin based on the from and to date here and of course the user can then change it but it's much easier that we automatically have a to date based on the terms so let's put in some just some sample terms here term let's call it term one and then we'll do dash two zero two one we'll do term 
2 and then also 2021, 2021, everything within the same year. But you can get an idea of the different terms we can use in term. We'll speed this up a little bit. Term 3-2021 and then term 4 dash. 2021. Okay, so we want different dates and we want to make sure they're separate. So we'll just put this one, let's say January 21st, and then I'll reformat those. So let's start it at January 21st to, let's say, April 1st. And then also I want to, let's say, let's do April 19th all the way to, not 19, all the way to, let's say, June 25th. 625 and I do want to include the year on that so we're going to be updating that then we'll do let's say June 30th 630 all the way to let's say September 17 917 then the final term of the year something like uh, 410 all the way through 10 October 4th all the way through December let's say December 17 12 17 okay but I do want to show the year so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight everything on this and then I'm going to go into the home and then go into the formats here and then I'll just set the date here we want to add it in the date so we'll go into the let's say we can do date and I want to look something like this one because I want to show the month like this because that way regardless of the format so January to April April to June June to September and then October to December okay that's perfect saving our work here so we've got our two names we're also going to need holidays too but I'll do them a little bit later on uh, terms so I also want to do this so again we'll just Go into the home and then we'll just actually formulas name manager new and this one we're just going to call it terms and again using the offset we can paste that in here and basically this particular one actually we'll, i think this one's a little bit different we're starting out on a different row so i'm going to do this one uh again by itself so offset bringing it over here selecting that header there comma one comma comma count a all the way and then highlighting the entire including the header and parentheses subtracting one comma one okay so that covers our terms everything's looking good and we're okay we can probably create from in two dates but we'll keep it open for now i think eventually we may so that's the term okay we're good to go let's see what else we have here just in case we don't application settings in case we have any others all right i think we're good on that so we've got the names and uh, certificates did we create one for this one i don't believe so let's just double check for that uh, making sure that we have one because it's very important we're going to be selecting from the certificate here certificate no we have a certificate ID we have a certificate name let's take a look at that okay good we've got one certificate name we're going to need that as well let's do that all right we're ready ready to go into the classes and we're going to build this up here a few small different differences here I want to um, change this a little bit I want a duration I want to put in hours so I'm going to unmerge this one and then uh, what I want to do is I want to put in something. I'm just going to copy this here, this format here, and then I'm going to put it here. So in this case, I'm just going to put hours because I need a drop down list of hours. So that's another duration we need. And also the minimum score grade. Again, I've got different ideas for this. Because So let me just uh, merge, unmerge the center of this. And I'm going to keep this open. I'm going to format this cell. So what ideas do I, I have on this one? Well, grades can be letters, they can be percentages, or they can be scores. There's really kind of three different types. If we look, again, back into the admin and we look into the grades and scoring, grade could be a percentage, it could be a score, or it could be something else. So how do we know the difference? So why don't we give the user or the administrator the ability to show that in the side so we could let them choose what do they want a minimum is it going to be a grade is it going to be a percentage or a score so that way if we're going to be awarding a certificate we could award it based on anything above a c grade or above or anything above 90 percent or anything above 90 points something like that but let's have a drop down list here and call it minimum greater score which we have and we'll put the drop down list and that drop down list can be again it could be something like a grade uh, minimum percentage or score so why don't we add that in now so I'm going to go into the data validation here I'm just going to add that simple data validation into a list and it's going to be three ones grade and then we'll just call this minimum percentage or and then the last one I'm just going to put score so that way they can choose between the three of them okay so now that we've got that so if they choose grade what I want is a drop down list here of grade if they choose minimum percentage I want a percentage format here if they choose score, well, I want a number format here. So I'm going to also change the formats based on what they score. The first thing is I want to know if it's a grade. We need to create, a, again, a named range based on grades. I don't think we did that yet. So it would be just something called grades. So when we go into the formulas here, name manager, and again, I don't think we have anything. So let's create that. We're just going to call it grades, something very simple. 
again, like I said, it's going to be a master class on dynamic named ranges. So you'll know it. Offset, again, same thing. First row, including the header, comma one, exclude the header, count A, again, all of them ones. Developing applications is a lot of repetition. Okay, that's part of it. So, so does real applications, not everything is so incredibly interesting. Minus one, comma one. Okay, tab out, tab back into it, double check. We're good on that. Click OK. Click close. Okay, going on to the classes, back inside the classes here. Now what we can do is we can assign that specifically to this, like if it's great. So we can do that dynamically, and we'll get to that once we get to the coding. I want to make sure that we've first, again, applied our named ranges accordingly to our data validations here. So we also have teachers, right? So what do we want? Let's put that in. Let's put it. I want to actually uh, sort a teacher. So I'm going to add a data validation. I'm going to drop this down for now in a second. List. And then what do we want? I'm going to use F3. I'm going to search for that. I don't remember the exact name. So it was teachers sorted. Teachers full name sorted. That's the one I want to use. Click OK. And OK, I want to select between our teachers. Subjects, we'll want that. Again, let's drop this down here. Data validation here. And then what we're going to do is again click list here. And then also the search. I think it's subject equals subjects. Okay, good. So we've got our, our different subjects now, and that's the way we want it. And also what I want to do is I want to know the term. So let's put that in there. We added that already. We just created that. So we can do a list and then equals and then terms. Okay, good. So we've got the terms. Now, again, when I change this on some VBA, as soon as I change this term, I want these dates to populate. So haven't done that, but only when we're actually, not when we're actually loading this in, right? When we load this in from the database, which we're going to create today, it's going to do that. So we got, I've got rooms and we've got year or level. Let's make sure, I think we did change. I don't know if we did. Let's take a look at that. If we created a name range on year or level, I don't think so. Year or level, oh, we did good here. So I'm going to use that one. That's the one I want to put in here. So we've got a lot of them here. Back into the data, data validation, year underscore level list equals year underscore level there we go so now we've got the grades here we've got rooms or location i'm going to add that in data validation here listing here you're learning how data validation equals rooms and then the hardest part is just remembering the name you created but if you use f3 you can get there okay so we got the room start time we need to create that okay that's not a correct data validation did we add that to the wrong okay so we want to add start times i want to put a list of times in there i think we have that into data validation we created that last week times i think we called it let's take a look at that and see what we got there okay good so that's our list of times that's what i want i want that start time 8 a.m and then we need to format that so we can go into the general and then the duration i think we need to also create one for duration so i'm going to go into let's say i don't like this time because it includes the seconds we don't need that i want to include just without the seconds this is what i'm looking for and uh, we need the duration that we have not created yet so let's do that we need a list of durations Okay, so into the admin we go. We'll just place it there, and I'll put it in column probably B. So we've got space here. We've got our our uh, times here. These are our times, and I'll put duration here, durations. Okay, so what do I want to start out? Let's put a 15-minute class, and then we'll just build it from there. So we have 15 minutes. I'm going to put equals. It's this here. just depends on how we format that. So if I click here, I want to format that based on that. So if I click uh, a time format, pretty much the same format I just used, and then we're going to do it right about here, but not this one exactly here. I want to make sure it's only those minutes, just the minutes is what I'm focused on. So it's this one right here that'll get us this 1330. That'll cover just the minutes. That's all I want, 15. And so basically, I want this, whatever equals this, right? Plus what? Plus 15 minutes again. So all we're doing is adding this again here, this particular 15 minutes, except in this case, equals the one above, right? plus adding plus and then 15 minutes so how do we do that just click in there but i want to make sure that this specific 15 minutes which we did last week is of course absolute so f4 is going to do that now when i drag this down here it's going to be all the way so we can go all the way let's see i want to go to about 12 hours so we can keep dragging down all the way to about 12 hours so 10 15 well, those are long classes okay that's going to cover it there now we've got it let's just highlight these so we can see everything properly and make it look like so we understand it's important and give it that color and give it that uh, borders okay so now we have although it doesn't include this here so now we have our durations here so i'm going to hold down the shift and i'm just going to call this duration 
Durations, okay, there we go. So now we have a name range called durations. Every 15 minutes, from 15 minutes all the way to 12 hours. Perfect, so now all we need to do is just add that into the classes. So going back into the classes, duration here is going to be data validation here, adding the new data validation here, a list, and then just gonna equal durations. Okay, so now we've got our durations. We can set how long we want this class to be. And of course, we need to format this the same way we did. So under the uh, home and then format, we're going to do the same thing. More number formats, time, we're going to use this 1330 here. Okay, that's going to format it so we know how many hours it is. And uh, also, you can set this to, uh, you know, dynamically. So you could do something like, right, if this is equal to one less than one hour, so equal, do something like it equals if right this is less than what less than probably this one right here less than this one it should be hour comma hour otherwise hours you could do something like that comma hours so you know it's less okay there we go something like that so one hour or two hours we fix that admin beef is less than i gotta update that less this here that's what i want to do less there we go. Now I like it. Okay, that works better. So we got uh, less than one hour, one hour. Okay, perfect. So now we can default that based on number of hours. Okay, continue on. We have certificates. We've got grades in there. We have class type. Let's get that in there. Data validation. We're almost done mostly. And then we'll add that one in. And I think that's going to be it. So equals class underscore type. I believe that was good. I like that. Now we've got the class type. Perfect. And we'll have total enrolled. This is going to be easy. Equals count A of all the students here. We can go up to a high row. Let's say 99. Nine. And then we could just do. So now we've got the total enrolled here in account A. We can format that as a number, not as a date. So going back in here in general. So now we have three. And as we add students here, it's going to increase automatically. All right. I like that. We'll add conditional formatting here. We'll add conditional formatting here. And we've got a lot to cover. All right. Let's continue on. Okay, let's make some updates to our hidden columns because it's going to be very different than the other things. So the first thing what we can do is, okay, I don't think I'm going to be putting anything in here for now. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that down there. So this thing I want to put, put uh, I want to put an option here, as you saw in the sample called show inactive classes. And I want to create a specific uh, option here, a checkbox here that we can show. So under the form controls, I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to place it right here. And I'm going to call this show inactive classes. So I'm going to type in show. And basically, I want to give the user the ability to show those classes that are beyond uh, the end date. So once they've completed, they won't show up here unless they've selected this show inactive classes. Because we could have a lot of classes, right, for many, many years. So we may only want to show those that are active. Active, what does active mean? Well, I'm thinking that active means anything where the to date is in the future, right? If the current date is less than the to date, then it would be active. Anything that I, you know, if we decide to end the class, we change this to date to the current date, and then it's no longer gonna show up here. But however, you may wanna show it with this. So I wanna make sure that B3 is the one that's connected. So format those, and that's the link that I'm gonna be putting in B3. So clicking okay. So as we change this, then B3 will then change. All right, continuing on, what do I want in the four? I wanna know if we're gonna be loading the class. It's very important, very important important, especially in this one, load, class load. This is going to be a true or false. And why is that important? Because when a user makes a change to here, change changes, I wanted to update that database automatically, which we're going to build. If the class is loading, meaning when we select a specific class here, it's going to load. Those are also change events to this, but I want to make sure to differentiate between those two types of changes. So we can do that with class load. Also, I want to make sure that we have the class ID. The We're going to put in that class ID is here. Class ID. So if it's one or whatever it is, right, it's going to go in here. I'm also going to put in the class here. So let's do that class ID. So whatever one, whatever class has been selected or has displayed, I want to know that that class ID. So equals, basically, this is going to be a fix. It's not going to be changeable, whatever is located in here. And then, of course, I'm going to left justify this here and then right justify the one to the right. So I'm going to write and then we'll just make it bold. That's just going to be fixed and automatic. So we always know what class is loaded up whatever displayed it here into the class ID. Okay, so next up, once I have the class ID, I also want to know in, let's say six, I want to know the selected class row. Selected class row, class row. That's selected meaning which one do they select here inside 
E. So, so if they select here or here, I want that row to display right here. So for example, if it's, let's say five, it's gonna show up when we add conditional formatting, we're gonna know the difference, we're gonna know which one's been selected. Also next up, what I want to do is I wanna know the class row based on the loaded ID, the class database row. I wanna know that row based on the ID, based on ID, which one's loaded. So when we create our named ranges, it's gonna based on here, and we're gonna do that in just a moment. And also we need to do that. So why don't we do that now? Let's continue on just so we have everything. I'll fill this up. And then after the class ID, I'm gonna to want to know the selected term row, selected term row. We can do that now. If I know what the terms is, I wanna know what row it's on. And so if we go into our admin, we know that our terms, if I click under here, we click under uh, uh, scheduling and settings here. We know our terms start in 15. So I want to know what row they are starting at 15. So if the first term is selected and I want to know what row, I just need to add 14. So I'm going to do that right inside the classes here. So select the term row is going to be something like equals if error. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run a match. And we're going to be based that match. We're looking up this term. I'm basing it on the term, the name range that we created. And I want an exact match. And then, But again, I want to add 14 on that because I want to know it's the first row. I think it was 14. Okay, if there's an error, I want to empty. Okay, so that was the first one. Let's see, first one's going to be on 15. Was that right? First one's going to be on 15, correct? The second one's going to be on 16. So that's exactly what I want. Okay, so we've got that. I want to know the term because when I know that row, once I know that row, it's very easy for me to then populate because all I need to do to populate, I'll just say inside VBA J9 is equal to whatever is in AY and the term row. And then the to date is simply AZ in the term row. Once I know that term row, it's easy to populate. Okay, also what I want to know after the term row is one of the next class ID, the next class ID. We need to create that named range to get that class ID so we don't have that yet. I'm going to delete that here. And then also what I want to know is the class ID row. Let's see. I think that I want to know a duplicate class name. I'll put the duplicate class ID. I'll put that in, let's say, 13 up here because we don't need as much. We'll replace whatever's there. That's fine. And then also what I want to know the class ID row based on a search, right? If they enter a class ID, I want to know what that is. So we can put that here inside the 11 class row, we'll put it in class row, let's say database row, class database row, and then search ID based on the search ID, search, let's do abbreviate search ID, okay, so we can abbreviate there, so that's going to be based again on this ID, so if I know that there's a row there, I can then take that one, so if they enter that, so let's do that here, equals, get rid of that, equals if error, we don't have the named range for class ID, yet, not yet, we need to create those class IDs right now, so we'll do that. So basically, we're gonna have that. Everything else we don't need, so let's clear that out. We may add, you know, we'll probably add things in the future, but for now, that's it. And let's go ahead and just uh, create those and then color them all the same so we can see what we've got going on here. And then I'm gonna left justify these. Let's just add some boundaries, some borders around that. Left justify this and then right justify. All right, so we're good to go. So we've got that, but we do need, of course, we need the uh, we need to fill in these formulas with the named ranges to do that we need to create that database. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. We've got a teacher database, but I want to create a classes database. So just that classes database, I'm going to call the sheet name classes and then database. That's going to be everything. One of our database is going to end with DB. That's going to help us. And I'm going to drag this over here. I want it right next to classes, at least temporarily, so we can work on them together. And so what's going to be in that? Well, it's going to be all the fields, basically. So all I need to do, again, is take a screenshot of all my fields and include the columns and include that. And I'm going to use my Snagit software to do just that. So what I'm going to do is take a screenshot. And that's going to help us map the data. We've been over this before. We're going to go it again because that repetition is going to help us. Okay, so I've got a screenshot there. And I'll just copy it from my software, control C, and then bring it back into that. I'm going to bring, bring it back right into the database there. I'm going to paste that in. And that's going to help guide us fill out the appropriate fields. So I'm going to paste that in there. Okay, so what we're going to first thing we're going to have is we're going to have our map data here. This is going to call it classes database. The look and feel won't matter because nobody's going to see this. So we don't need to put in much in, input on uh, as far as the look here. And then also the first thing I'm going to have, of course, is the class ID. So I want that as a first. And next up, I want the class name after that I'm gonna have the assigned teacher so I'll put that in assigned teacher we can just put in teachers fine you know, keep it small teacher and then well I want the subject the term from date also the to date and then uh, I want after that we're gonna have the year or level 
as long with the room or location, abbreviate that is fine, and also want the start time and then the durations are time and duration. Okay. All right, continuing on in column L, we are going to have the certificate. I want to know what certificate if we're applying a specific certificate to this course or class. So certificate and also the grade type, grade type that's required. Remember, grade type, is it score? Is it grade or whatever it is? And then whatever the grade is or score or whatever it is, we'll just put grade. I also want to know the class type. We have that. That's information that's important as well as the notes then each day of the week so we're gonna start off with Monday and then we can just continue on we can use autofill to help us automatically all the way to Sunday here's Sunday Sunday is gonna end up in column W so once we have that the last I just need three more I want the max students maximum student that we're going to be having in that class and also what icon so we're gonna put the icon name there and then last thing I want the color what is the color on the schedule we're gonna have dynamic coloring on the schedule and so that's gonna help us differentiate between types of courses so we can create a unique color okay good that's good and then what else do I want that's it for our database but obviously we're gonna at some point we're gonna be filtering it so we might as well if we're here adding in some criteria so we're gonna put in something called criteria here so I want to filter this and the first thing I want to do is class name now remember when you're typing this in if you type it in wrong like I just did it's going to create an issue when we run our advanced filter so what I always like to do is just copy this and then paste it right in here it's very very important it'll reduce bugs if you copy and paste it sometimes we think we know the name and we forget what we did okay and then the to date I also want to know the to date because remember we are also going to uh, run advanced filter based on that to date right if it's a current date so I'm going to paste that in there then I also want the results to come in here so this particular advanced filter, we'll probably have many advanced filter on these classes. I'm sure we will when we run the scheduling. But this particular advanced filter, I only want to focus on the class name and the class ID. So that's it. All I want to do is class ID. So I'm going to copy that, even though I could remember that. And I'm going to put the class ID. So what I want to do is run an advanced filter as long as the class name is not blank. So not blank would be this. I also want to run an advanced filter based on the to date. So that to date may or may not, it's going to be dependent on what option. It's going to be dependent on this option right here that we selected based on uh, B3, right? If we want to show inactive, then I'm going to show all regardless of the to date. Otherwise, I'm going to show it less than or uh, less than or equal to the current date. So that's going to be based on a formula. So how would we do that? Well, we can do that. I also want to make sure it's not blank, obviously. So let's go back into the database and write that formula while we're here. So and then we're going to map the data field. So what would it look like? So it would be an if there. So let's go ahead and write equals if statement. And then it's going to be the classes based on the classes. So classes B3. So we can go over to the classes here based on B3. If that, in that case, is equal to false, then what do I want to do? Then I want to show it's going to be less than, less than, or equal, and the quotation marks, and what? And the t t current day, today. Otherwise, simply maybe just not blank. Otherwise, not blank. There we go. So the idea is if if it's if they have it selected, they want to show all, we're just going to make sure that they're not blank. Blank would be considered if we deleted it or maybe in case that there isn't a two date, there should always be a two date. Otherwise, they're always going to show. So we want to make sure that there's a two date. And then so the idea is but if they've unselected it, you know, to show, then only they're going to be showing active classes. So I only in this case only active classes. So in that case when they selected this formula here goes to false, right? And in this case back in the T class database, now our formula looks like this less than 44302. Now 44302 is a date, right? 44302, but we want to leave it in that format, right? I want to leave it. It is a date, it's the current date, April 16th, the date of recording this. So I want to keep it just in this format. That's very important because our named our results will be help regardless of the format of the date so that's very very important an emergency center this is just give it a little bit of a color here contrasting this and then I'll do the same thing to here as well that just kind of helps us differentiate and then I'm going to just put some borders around here and here so now we can see so basically we have our criteria already all set here and so when we run our advanced filter our results are going to come here we'll have all the classes then all I need to do is bring in those classes and bring them directly inside here bringing them right here 
here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the class name appear here. I'm gonna have the class ID appear here. That class ID will be hidden. It'll be hidden simply because we're gonna change the font name to the same as the background because I, why is that class ID important? That class ID is important because it is this class ID, whatever's going to be located here, that I'm going to place directly in here. Once I have that class ID here, I'm going to know what row it is based on here, based on the class database row, the row here, not the selected this row here. So what we want to do is now finish out our data valid, or excuse me, our data mapping, then run our named range based on the class ID, and then maybe another one on class name. So let's do that right now. We're going to do the data mapping now. Data mapping, as you know in this, because you're following the series, we're going to map these specific cells to that. So our class ID, that's got to be located. It's not necessarily important for that because we're going to do that manually, but that's, of course, going to be located directly here into B5. B5 is where our class ID is. So that's the first one we want. That's the only one that's off the screen. Notice we don't have that. So B5 is where we're going to map that b5 and then next up in the class name i want to make sure that that's going to be l9 right and then year level is going to be h11 we have a new assigned teacher i want to make sure that that teacher gets assigned b5 okay next up the class name the first one we want the class name of course that's going to be h7 and then the teacher is going to be uh, j7 next up we have the subject l7 and also the term, right? The term we need H9, so I want to make sure that's H9. The from date and J9, and then L9. J9, and the two date is L9 based on that. The year or level we have, that's going to be H11. And then the room or location is going to be J11. J11. Okay, the start time, we've got that start time, that's going to be H13. And then, of course, we have the duration. That's going to be J. Now, duration type J. And then, in that case, it's going to be 13. So, J13. Next up, the certificate is going to be, in this case, H15. Also, we want to make sure the grade is J15, the type there. And the grade itself is going to be in K15. Okay, class type is our next. And that's going to be the row down. That's going to be based on 17. H17. Our notes are going to be located. we got to put those in bring this up a little bit notes are going to be of course in our g19 okay that's our covers our notes and then what do we want to do is we want to put in the days of the week it's going to be m11 m11 m12 m13 m14 m15 and i'll double check these m16 and m17 and now also a little bit different here in our Mac students, of course, that's not going to be different. That, of course, is going to be our M19. However, on our icon and our color, slightly different on those. Why is that? Well, here's what I want to display. Inside the classes, right, I want to display the icon itself. And I only want to display the icon. I don't want to put the icon name there. So, And the same thing with class color. I'm going to put a number that corresponds to that color, but I only want to show the color here. I don't want to show the number. So where can I put those? Well, let's take a look at this. I'm going to unhide this. I can put them right here. This, this is available. So in class icon, I can put that in the name, just the name, in N20. And I can put the class color number associated with that color uh, located in N21. So N20 and N21, why don't we add those there? And then they'll be hidden. So N20 for the, for the icon and N21 for the color. That's it for the data mapping. That covers everything. All I'm just going to just make this look a little bit so we can differentiate between the two and then I'll just add some borders around there and then center that and then just give this a color merge and center so we have a class database uh, won't spend too much effort on on what this would look like and then again with that row we're gonna just highlight that so we can see them a little bit more clearly all right good so we're good to go on the database now what we can do is we can focus on those named ranges next thing I want to do we're good with this let's double check B5 make sure we don't have H9 J9 L11 these look good any issues with the named ranges spaces or incorrect characters would create an issue so we want to try to make sure everything's good we're done with this so I'm just going to delete that picture we don't need any more saving our work now we're ready to create our named ranges now by now you know how to create named ranges class ID again starting at the header row so we're going to go into the formulas name manager and then new we're going to call this class ID that's the perfect name of course using the offset here as you know already and then starting out on the header row and then one row down no columns over count a we're counting everything starting on the header row and all the way on down so we can use a large number here and then minus one because I don't want to include that header comma one okay tab over tab out make sure it's all right good so we're good to go 
I'm, I want the same thing under class names. So if I, I want also class names that's sorted. So the class names are gonna be basically be, we'll use the same column and then we may add sorted names in advance. We'll do additional class names. I'm just gonna add something basic right now. It's gonna help us to look for duplicate. So again, new, we're gonna do, actually what we can do is just go into the class ID, copy that and update that. Control C, new, this one's gonna be class name. It's gonna be based on column B. So I'm just gonna tab into there and a focus on column A is fine for the counting purposes, but we want to direct it to column B. Why is that important? Because here's, here's what's important. I want to count all of them in this particular case, but what if we delete a class? If I delete a class, class name is going to be empty, right? but I don't I want to count every single one. So I'm basing the count on ID. Even if we delete a class, ID is going to remain. So I want to run that count based on column A, but I want to focus on column B. That's the column I want to create. So we tab over. Notice it's highlighted. Notice there's no, so that's why it's important. So notice if we created three different classes and then we deleted them, I still want this to show up just like it is. So click OK. That's going to help us finding duplicates. All right, so let's continue on. Now that we've created all of our name range, now we can go back into the classes and uh, finish up our formulas just what we want. So again, we've got a class database row based on the ID. So all we need to do is just change this out. Obviously, it's not going to be based on this particular one. It's going to be based on this here. And we're going to change this to class ID. We're, the row number is still the same, class ID. So tab over that. We know that class num ID number one is going to end up in row four. So that is correct. Okay, selected term row, that's correct. The next class ID is gonna be based on the max, but if there's none, equals if error, if there's nothing that we need to default it to one, it would be an error. So max based on the class ID, we've gone over this a bunch of times, plus one would be the next one. If there's an error, meaning there's no date at all, let's default that to one. So that way, as soon as I delete these class, class IDs, class, it's going to automatically set it to one, which is what I want. Deleting that, it's going to refer that to one. And this one is going to be now blank, which is what I want. So as soon as we there. So we know if B7 is blank, we know it's a brand new class. Okay, class database row search ID. So based on this, again, we're going to do the same thing. All I need to do is just copy this and then change the specific row. This is going to be based on the search ID. So the search ID is going to be located right here inside M, this is one M, so instead of B5, we're gonna focus directly here on M5. So that's it, so as soon as I put in a search one and then I populate the class database with a specific class ID, we can then see that that should show up in row four. So we know that, so when somebody searches for that, we run a search and that search ends up with a, something other than blank. We know that there's a row, we know which row to load. All I need to do is pull the ID from here then and put it directly inside here. So again, as soon as we know that there's a correct row, we pull the ID, we put it from here, and then we run the load. So we can then load it up. Okay, let's add some conditional formatting based on this. I want uh, three different types of conditional formatting. I want one based on the row, and I want also alternate rows. So let's go ahead and uh, highlight a bunch of rows here, all the way down here. And then what we'll do is we'll add some conditional formatting. So again, let's go into home, and then conditional formatting and new rule and we're going to use a formula. And this formula is gonna be based on two conditions, equals and two conditions. The first one is I wanna make sure that there's a value in E, right? And then of course, it's gonna be for every single row. So I'm gonna take the absolute dollar sign out of that, we don't need that. Does not equal empty, and also let's go for even rows. So equals mod, that's gonna be auto hotkey, help me populate that formula. I'm gonna get rid of the equals. Now this is for even rows, meaning it's zero. So for those even rows, what I wanna do, I wanna format them. I wanna put a border all the way around it, a black border. And I wanna just basically uh, put in a fill slightly different than the background. So I'll, the background's this color, I'm gonna go with this color, this particular color here, and click OK. All right, so that's good for even, even rows, but what about odd rows? I'm gonna copy that, click OK. And now once it's copied, I'm gonna add a new one, new rule, and here's another one. This one, I'm gonna paste this in there, the ones, but this one's gonna be for odd rows. So to do that, click OK, and then format, I'm gonna do the same black border all the way around, but this time the fill, I'm gonna go with this color, but a little bit lighter. So fill effects, not actually, not fill effects, more colors, and then just raise it a little bit lighter here. 
So that way we get the alternating row effect. Click OK. And OK, one more conditional formatting. OK, so that's nice. So now as we start adding data, notice the conditional formatting automatically applies. One more. I want to make sure that the selected row is highlighted differently. So that selected row is going to be based on B6. However, I want to do something additional more. I want to do something more because there's different class IDs. If I put a class ID in here, I want to highlight. In other words, regardless, of, usually we select a row. But what happens? Here's what happens. So. When we load, let's say I, I change the name here. Let's say I change this name and it changes the location or, or resorts the list, right? I always want to make sure that whatever the class ID shows up here, whatever this class ID is and whatever this class ID, or sorry, whatever this class ID is here is the same. So in other words, when this class ID is equal to whatever the class ID is, I want to highlight that slightly different. When we select a row, we're going to use that too. So I'll explain a little bit more as we go about it. So the best way to do that, again, is just to highlight this. And then we'll go back and we can manage the rules. And we can just highlight the range. So this is going to be the applies to, of course. So again, so just highlighting all the rows that we wanted to affect. Going down here, it's going to be based on two conditions. And again, just like we did before. So new rule based on two conditions. So we're going to use that and equals and. I want to make sure that uh, those rules don't get highlighted. I want to make sure that class ID, this is absolute fixed, does not equal empty, right? And make sure it's empty. And then I also want to make sure something that's relative. In this here, starting at F5, getting rid of the 5 because it's going to be for every row, equals when it equals whatever class ID is here. Then I want to highlight it, right? So B5 is fixed in here. B5 is fixed here. So it's making sure it's not empty, F5. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to format that. So I'm going to do the fill. I'm going to go to fill effects in this case. I'm going to go with our here color here, a little bit darker, mostly dark. Just give it a little bit fade like we have the rest of it, which is consistent with our theme. The font here is bold and also consistent with our theme white. Okay, so everything's consistent here. It's just a slightly different way that we're applying it. Okay, good. I like that. So now as I change this to two or three here, notice it changes. So that way we can do it. So when I select something, it changes. These are going to be hidden. Remember, all I need to do here is simply change the font color to here, and they're going to be hidden. But they're important because when I select a specific class, I want that to load. All I need to do is take this specific ID, place it directly in here, and load everything up. Great. And I'm also just looking at this. I want to change this to scheduled lessons. I think it's going to look a lot better. Scheduled lessons are made up. Multiple lessons made up, make up one class. So I think that makes more sense. So I do need to change it on every single one of them here. Scheduled lessons. And then we'll put that in the tabs. Because I think uh, lessons are just a little bit clearer. Class, because we, otherwise we're going to be using it for two different things. So in this case, less, I'll change each one to lessons. And also change it down here, also within the tabs. So scheduled lessons, the idea is that once we create a class, or once we edit or update a class, it's going to then create, automatically create, multiple multiple lessons per class. And so each one's going to be automatically created. So once we have multiple lessons, if we change the time, they all get changed. And they're all going to be linked by class ID. So we're going to have individual lesson IDs and then individual class IDs. So they're all going to be linked, just like, as if, we, just like if you have an invoice and you have invoice items based on that. So I think we got them all. This one we need to do. Schedule a class. And we and sometimes it's difficult. All you need to do is just you click on it. Or you can, of course, pause the code if it's creating issues for you. Scheduled lessons. Okay, so general scheduled lessons. Uh, everything says scheduled lessons now. So it's going to be really, really powerful. All right, moving on. So we've got a lot to cover still. Continuing on, I want to actually add a color and icons here. That's going to, This color can go to white, but this is going to be a dynamic color because I want to see how our icon appears against whatever color. So having these two color based on the color selection. Let's add that in now. So how are we going to do that? Well, the best way is to just use a color palette. Now, I already created one. There's no need for uh, me to create another one. So I'm just going to pull up the sample here. I've got it right here. I'm just going to copy it. And all it is is basically a bunch of shapes colored in different ways. This is what I'm going to create here. So I'm just going to copy this and I'll bring that into our current application here. And I'm just going to paste that in. Okay, so we have something called color palette. I'm going to uh, save our work here. 
And then I'm going to close out that sample. I don't want to get confused between the two applications because that could easily happen and it's happened before. Okay, so now we've got that. So I've got a color palette here. And again, all this is is simply just shapes. They're not named in any real, each individual shape, they're just rectangles of colors, nothing more. Right? You can do that yourself, insert if you wanted, but there's really no reason to reinvent the wheel. They're just a bunch of square shapes. So very simple. The name of this is called color palette. I want this to appear when we make a selection on class color. When I select a specific color, I want that color to appear not only in the class color, but on the class icon. I want it to appear both here. So why don't we write up that code now? In fact, let's write up some macros to help us automate these classes. Okay, so into the VBA we go. We haven't done much coding up until now. And then uh, let's go ahead into classes. We have classes, miscellaneous classes, macros. That'll cover it. We've got our this. Uh, we can put down the bottom. We don't need that too much. So let's write it. So first thing I want to do is sub class, then select color. We're going to need that. And also I'm going to need uh, class show icon list sub class show icon that's going to show that icon list we're going to build that out really cool dynamically each time we're going to build it out it's going to be super fast so also i want another macro when we select a specific icon i want a macro that does that too when we select a specific icon we need to know what so sub class and then select icon and then also another one to actually show the icon. So one to select it, one to show it. And it's going to be important. It'll come why they're separate. It'll become clear very soon. Class and then show icon. Okay. And show that. Basically what I want to do is I want to have a pop-up list and I want to show that icon directly inside this class icon cell here. My icons are white, so I'm going to pretty much go with the darker colors here because I'd like, I think the, the back of the scheduling screen is going to be white. So the class, the darker classes with the white font and white icon, it's going to provide a nice contrast. So I think that will, it's kind of good to decide early on, but of course you can change your icon colors. Of course you can have whatever you want. I just chose white. So we're going to choose the darker colors for that. Okay, so let's write the first macro that's going to go in. That's the one that's going to call select color. So the first thing what I want to do is when I select on this, I want that to appear. Here, that palette I wanted to appear so that's based on a selection change selection change so when we do that let's write some macro a little bit to do that so go back into the classes and we're gonna go into that class worksheet here and we're gonna write up some macros we already have selection change based on of course the tabs but we're gonna write a little bit more so let's go drop it down here and we're gonna base it on a specific the first thing what we want to do is anytime you have something like a pop-up or something that only appears hide it the first thing you want to do, so if I select anything, no matter what I select, I want this hidden. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do. If it's visible, if it's currently visible. So here's, I'm going to copy the names, can help us move quicker and uh, not have any bugs. So if shapes, right, and then paste in that name, dot visible equals true, we can use true in this case, then I want to hide it. Then shapes, the paste it in, dot visible equals MSO false. So basically what that's going to do, as soon as I select on any cell in the sheet, it's going to be hidden, just like that. I don't want it showing up. I only want to show up if I click here, the class color, M21. That's the one we want, M21. Then we want to show up, and we want to show up in a place, specific place. So again, if not, we're going to focus on that M21. M21, if we make a selection on that, only then do we want it to show up. So, but where do we want to show up is nothing then we want to show up. So if we're going to focus directly on that with shapes, again, color palette, I'm going to focus. The first thing what I want to do is I'm going to put it on the left position. Where do I want to place it? Perhaps around N, let's say N21, right? So right around there. So right around N or any, any, any cell really, it doesn't matter. So right around, let's say N21, right around there. So let's write that in right now. So left equals, now I'm going to, I'm going to call out the sheet again here, classes dot range n 21 dot left dot left that's the left position the top is going to be very very similar so let's just copy this and then put down here dot top is going to be equal to and then classes or double equals there classes and then this one's going to be the dot top position so we want the top and the left but it'll maybe a little bit left but i it will be up here too low right it's going to be too low so maybe we should put it a little bit higher so that the bottom appears there so why don't we use something around n21 otherwise it's going to be a little bit too low off the screen so let's do that let's change that to n12 and this to n12 
And then what we want to get rid of the extra equals and reset this. We don't need that now. And then so but the top, maybe a little bit minus three, something like that. And the last thing is we need to make it visible. So dot visible equals MSO true. That's going to actually display it, show it. OK, we can close this out, this end width, close the end if here, saving our work before running the code. Now, when I select it, that should appear here. So selecting that, it's going to appear right here. OK, I like that. That's a good. That, that's fine. You can place it above or below, but that's pretty a good idea. So now the idea is when I click on something, I want that color to appear in two places right here and here. And another thing is I also we should unhide this too. I'm going to unhide it because I want to use that column. Not only do I want the color to appear, I want to put that specific color, the number of that color located in N21. N21 is the exact field that we have mapped to that color. So we want to put that color right in here, that number. And same thing, the icon name is going to go there. OK, so let's do that. Let's write up some macro to do just that. So we're going to go back inside the classes macros here. And we're going to then click on select color because that's what we're doing. We're selecting a color. OK, so it's relatively simple. So, so first thing is we can do with classes. In this case, dot range n21. That's the one we want. N21. The value is going to be equal to what are we using? Going to use again dot shapes. What's the shape? Application dot color. That's the that's the shape that called it. The individual shape that called it. Well, I don't want. What do I want? I want the color of the shape that called it. For example, if I click here, right. What is this? If I want to put in this red, I want to know what this is the shape that called it. This is the shape here. So I want to know what is the color of this shape, this rectangle 90. What color? I want to get the interior color of this. I want to then put that interior color located directly in N21. So how do we do that? Again, we're going to use dot interior color dot fill dot for color dot rgb rgb so what is that rgb so let's so now all we need to do let's give it a try copy this and assign this entire macro to the entire group when we do that it's going to automatically assign that individual macro to every single shape within the group so all we need to do is just right click assign the macro paste that in there and click ok ok great so now when i select that and i click on our color it's going to take that and place it right here perfect that's just what i want now let's focus on coloring these cells okay taking a look back and we'll continue on with the macro so i also want to then color so dot range in this case m20 through m21 i want to give it a color so here's where we're going to use the interior color dot interior dot color is going to be equal to what equals to exactly whatever basically whatever is this here same thing we can just use that or we can use whatever is in n21 this is a little bit qu quicker but you know i mean a little bit less c code equals that it's the same thing now that we've already placed it so again that's all we're going to do is going to equal that and the last thing is i want to just hide the color palette so dot shapes and then color palette and then, of course, dot visible equals MSO false. So we're going to hide that color palette. Very, very simple macro. Just a few lines of code. So let's take a look at that. Let's see how that works. So moving on here, clicking on here, and then putting black. That's good. That's what I like. Give me a nice color. OK, it works nicely. The color number's changing here. And then everything's looking good here. Perfect. That's just what I want. OK, good. So we know how to apply the color. We know how to change the number here. Now what we want to do is we've got a few more things. And then I'm going to show you how to put in the icon here, too. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. But let's continue. There's a few other things that I wanted to go over there. When I change this particular, let's take this one here. This when I change this grade here, I want this to be automatically a drop down list. So let's focus on this change because I want to add that in right here. Let's put this to the left just by total mode five. OK, let's continue on. Also, I want to add some code while we're on selection change. When I select these days, I want to automatically hide or put the check mark or not. So let's get that's based on selection change. Since we're already on the sheet, let's add that in the selection change so we can close this out. Selection change. We're going to focus on here. In this case, we're focused on any of those days. So there's a lot of code to write M and each selection change between M11 and M17. We want to make a change. So if not intersection, then right again, M17 
all the way through, what was it? M, excuse me, M11 through M17. M11 through M17. M11 through M17. And we just write it, if the target dot value equals, let's just say that check mark, which is character 252, 252, then target dot clear contents. Otherwise, else, in this case, target dot value equals character 252. And the only other thing I want to do is I want to select something else. So let's just say I think H7 will select something else, selecting out of that cell. H7 will do just fine. So we're going to select on that. So range H7 dot select. Keep in mind you only want to do select when you're on the active sheet. It's going to create a bug. If you're not if you're running a macro where you're selecting a cell in a sheet and that sheet is not currently active, it will create a bug. Okay, so now when we select on this, it's going to check and uncheck. Perfect. We've already added the conditional formatting last week, so Okay, good, that's pretty easy. If I wanna create a, a class, uh, let's say five days a week, I would do just that. So when a user changes this to grade, I want this to be a drop-down list of grades. Remember we created that name range. Otherwise, anything else, I want this data validation cleared out. So how do we do that? Well, let's take a look. Of course, that's gonna be in the worksheet change event. So we're gonna focus on this particular classes, but we're focused on the not the selection change, but the worksheet change event, which is gonna be up here. So first of all, if target, I'm just gonna write some in case target dot count large is greater than let's say 20, then exit. So then this exit, this help prevents bugs sub if the user selects a very large, but just make sure that this 20, right, is greater than whatever the number of cells. This is our largest, right? If they make a change here, in this case, we have, of course, six columns and we have three rows. So we have, of course, 18 cells in this. So that's why we want it more. Why is that important? Because if I make a change here, automatically I want to update that database. So that's important to keep that in mind, okay? All right, so we have that now, and the reason is if they make a large change, we want it to escape. Okay, continuing on, if not, we're gonna make a specific, focus on a specific cell change, and that cell change is going to be based on that grade located in J15. So J15 is where we're gonna focus. So change this to J15, and then, then what do we wanna do? Then, and this particular one is going to be regardless. So that means if a new class loads, or not, I want this to act. So that means when a class loads, I want the drop down list, or when a user makes a change, both instances. So this one, there's no caveat saying on load or not load, regardless of the change, whether VBA is making the change because we're loading a class, or whether user is making a manual change, either one is going to you. So the first thing what we want to do is anytime we make a change that we want to have a, some, we want to work with the validation, we must delete any possible validation here. So I want to delete whatever's K15, any validation that's there, I'm going to delete that. That's the first step. So we can do that with this range K15, K. So that's the first thing we do. And then we add a validation K15 dot validation dot delete. So we're deleting that regardless of what they've put. Any change in J15, we're deleting it. Then I only want if the target dot value equals grade, then I want to add a validation. Then range K15, we're adding that in, K15 dot validation dot add, and we what kind of validation we added? This one's gonna be Excel validation list. I want a list type, that's the one we're focused on. And then also, what kind of alert style do we want? I'm gonna put Excel validation alert. So Excel valid alert stop, I'm gonna do a stop. And then operator we don't need, and then what's the formula? It's gonna be equal to grades. Grades is our named range. If we get that wrong, created grades. Okay, good. So that's it. That's all we have to do. And let's take a look at that. Saving our work before running any code. Going back into the sheet. Now, when I make this change, obviously there's nothing here. That's what I want. Grade, we're going to then be a drop down list of grades. Notice going back, score, it's now empty. Theoretically, we might want to clear it out, but I'm going to keep it for the way it is now and let the user clear it out. So grade, that's what I want, a drop down list of grades. Okay, that's working. Let's get to this really cool dynamic icon list. When I select here, what I want to do, I want to create a list of icons, regardless of how many icons there are. And the, all of our icons are located directly in the admin right here. So basically what I want to do is I want to create a list of these icons right here. And I'll have them show up 
all these icons are a little bit big for this admin, but it's okay. We'll create it. So the first thing what I want to do is create a basically a dynamic menu based on all the icons here. I want to put the name and I want to put the icon. So it's going to be something similar to this. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to create a sample shape for that. So sample and we're going to use that. We're going to duplicate that inside. So and that's going to be off the screen. So I'm going to create a little bit of a shape up here. And then what we'll do is we want to create that shape it's pretty much exactly the way we want our menu item shape to go okay so first thing we want to do is i want to format that so it's going to basically be the uh, black i'm going to use the same consistent i'm going to use the text of white and then i'll make it bold that text here and then what i want to do is i want to put in the of course the shape fill is going to be that black color or we're going to use the, the black color i don't necessarily need an outline on it so i'll do no outline and then again, I want it, to, uh, let's say, I'm gonna put left justified in the middle, but I wanna put spaces there for the icon. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, chemistry. Okay, that looks really good. Let's update the button size. I'm gonna have it maybe something about point, a little bit bigger, point two, three, and then we're gonna need a bigger to have the larger classes. So maybe about 1.3, 1.3. Okay, take a look at it. That looks pretty good. We've got enough space for icon on large sets. So here's our button. I'm going to give this a particular name. I'm going to call this icon and then menu sample. Okay, we're going to use this. So basically, the idea is to duplicate this, have it, um, have it, however many duplicated, however many items there are, put the icon there, and then create a group out of it. So group them all together, and then place that directly here place it directly on the side so then when they click on it that icons appear and then I want the icon name to appear here and this will of course this column column end will be hidden so having that there so how do we do that well just a little bit of code not too much let's go into that now saving our work again going back into that now we go back inside the classes macros and that's the one we're going to focus on right here classes macros show icon list so that's the first one I want to do is the show icon list so that's the macro and we're going to need some variables for many of these. So why don't we add all of our variables for all the macros now? So dimension the class row. We'll use these through all the macros there as long. Also, we need the class column. That's going to help load up class column as long. And also the last row. I need the last row as, of course, based on our all of our classes. And then we also going to need the last results row running re, uh, advanced filter. So we need to know that results row and as long and also the icon number we're going to be looping through the icon numbers now so we're going to need to know that icon number as long okay also some just a few strings so dimension the icon icon name as a string and also i want the icon let's say file path because i want to know the, the file path of that file path as a string Okay, a few more, but we're gonna put these specifically in the show icon list. So I'm gonna need to mention the icon row as long, and also the last icon row, last icon row as long. And also we need to know the icon number. We have that already. And the, the okay, that's it for that. And then let's take a look at the shape array. I want to mention the shape array. We're gonna need that as an array as a string, okay? And also one more dimension, we're gonna to have to group them just like we did, so shape group as a variant, okay? Variant, that's gonna help us with that grouping. Okay, good, so we have that. Now what I wanna do is I wanna know the last icon row. So how are we gonna do that? The last row, we gotta loop through them. We're gonna use the name, everyone has a name. Of course, everyone has a file name. So we'll use AR, AR, all the way, let's do with AR 20 or 30 or something like that, just in case, and we'll get the last. So the last icon row is equal to and it's going to be based again on the admin sheet. So we need to make sure we added the admin sheet and it's going to be AR and then we'll do 24 or something or let's just do 30, something larger. Okay, so that's going to get us the last icon row. Once we have that, if there's an existing menu group, I want to delete it. That's right. I want to delete it. Why do I want to delete it? It doesn't make sense. If we create it, why should we delete it? Here's the reason. and This is very important. Um, in this is a share and sync application and that means changes from every other user what if i create a nice little icon menu here but uh, another user adds three more icons if i just display it it's not going to show up so what i want to do is i want to know this particular table is going to also be populated from changes from every other user so if another user adds an icon i want that icon to be available and this 
macro works so fast that we can delete it and recreate it as often as we want. It's really super fast. So we want to make sure that if there's this old shape, we can delete it. So every time we select on it, it's going to dynamically create a brand new one. So first thing we want to do is if there's anything, any specific one, let's delete it. So we're going to give it a called icon menu group. So but if it doesn't exist, it could create an error. So we're going to wrap that in on error zoom next and then on error go to zero. And then we can put it in here. So dot shapes, so forget we got to do with sheet here on new why so notice I put dot and it didn't come up so when you see that dot right it should automatically come up that means I didn't do with classes I want to drop everything in here now when I add dot it comes up so we know okay so I'm going to drag this here that's just a way of checking you know when you're writing code and something doesn't quite work the way it usually does you know something's wrong and that means stop and check so dot shapes we're going to call this icon in this case menu group icon menu group i'm going to delete it right so in case it exists dot delete now let's go delete and i'll just put a comment here delete any existing menu okay so so I mean, now what i want to do is i want to focus directly on the sample right the first thing what i want to do is start looping so we're going to create our loop where does our loop start it's going to start directly inside the admin on row nine nine here it's going to loop all the way to the last one so we can run a loop for icon row for icon row we've already defined uh, equals nine to the last icon row also one caveat if for some reason if the last icon row is less than nine then exit sub just in case there's no icons there's nothing we, we don't want to create an error so if there's no icons we need to exit out of the sub for icon row and always close our loop next icon row okay so now that we have our loops and now what we can do is we can continue on so what are we going to do the first thing what i want to do is i'm going to drop this down a little bit and bring this back up i want to create uh, on our classes i want to duplicate that sample shape that we created because this one's going to be our first menu so icon menu sample this i'm going to copy this and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to duplicate it and then we're going to be able to work with it because that's the one so dot shapes and then we'll put in here icon menu sample dot duplicate and then we'll assign it a name right away what is the name that i'm going to sign i'm going to give it a unique name it's going to be equal to icon menu and the icon number icon number so what is that icon number why don't we set that right now let's set it to one icon number equals one that's the initial value of that icon number it'll grow it'll increment as we loop through all the icons so now that i've created a shape they called icon menu not here this is it the quotation okay there we go keith's like hey 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 you forgot okay so now we have we've created it automatically icon menu sample duplicating it we've created a unique name but now we need to work with it so first of all with I want to work with it dot shapes this specific one now we just need to copy this here and paste it in because i want to work directly with that shape so now we can do that with shape and then end that so how do we do that so now dot let's see the first thing what i want to do is i want to give it a text text frame right we want to give it some text what text do we want inside that dot text range dot text is going to be equal to whatever is in the admin right We're, that name in the admin what is it i'm going to give it that name where's that located that name is located in column aq and whatever row we're on but remember i don't just want to sign a name i need to put some spaces below it i need room for that icon so how are we going to do that well we could do dot text is equal to we counted about five spaces okay so quotation one two three four five spaces and also in the admin dot range aq and the icon row and the icon we're looping through icon row okay remember it starts at nine dot value so what is the value that's the icon name right so that's the what's going to be so what else what else do i want to do now i want to set the position but if once i duplicate it i want to set that position i want to put it basically in the position like if i could let's if i duplicate this right and then i create i create the text i want to set a position but what position well the first one doesn't really matter but the second one if i duplicate another one the second one must appear directly under the first one so it wouldn't apply to the first one but the second one and thereafter must appear directly under so that's the idea that's what i want to do so how can we do that well we need to check what number are we on if right so in this case we need if we need to know if we're on the first one or not if check on the icon row 
put a little comment here. If not the first icon menu item, then place shape below the last item. Okay, so how we can do it if icon number does not equal one, that would be the first one. Then what I want is I want to place it. So then the dot left position, dot left position is going to be equal to classes, right? That's the sheet where I'm going to need to call it the sheet because we're inside the width for the shape. Classes dot shapes. Here it's going to be again the icon menu, icon menu, and the icon number, but it's not the current icon number, it's the previous one, right? The icon number minus one, because it's that previous one based on the left position of that. And it's also going to be based on the top. So that places the left position. But what about the top position? It's going to be very, very similar, but it's going to be basically the top position of that, right? But I don't want the exact same top position, right? I don't want, if I duplicate, I'll show you again here. If I duplicate these two, right? I don't want them both at the same top position. I want it the top position plus whatever the height of this. It's going to drop it directly below. Top position plus the height of the button. So to do that, we just do that simply inside VBA. We add plus the height. So I want to know the height of this button. And then that's it. Plus dot, dot, dot height, height of that. Okay, very good. So that adds on the height to the top. So that basically places it directly below. And then end if. So that's it. That's all we need to do is to, for, to place the top position. So that covers the shape. But what I need to do is I need to, all these shapes, I'm going to need to group them all. I need to group everything together and put them in one single group. So I need to keep track of everything that I'm adding. So why don't we do that? Shape group is equal to the shape group. And in this case, the icon menu, basically it's this name right here, this name right here. I want to add it to our shape group because we're going to group everything together. So if we have them all directed, so, and then also want to add a comma to that, sorry, because I want to separate them by commas and the comma. So that, and so we're going to need to split that. So that builds that string, build string to, to group shape, to group shapes. Okay, so that adds a shape, but we still haven't addressed the icon yet. So let's address that. So we're good to go on that. We can do this end width can be up here, right? We don't need, it's not part of the icon shape. So we can put the end width here. We're just focused on the, the top, the left, and the position here, so, and the text frame. Okay, the macro, of course, we're going to get assigned, the macro itself will be assigned as a group. And now all we need to do is focus on the icon itself. So with that icon, let's focus on that. I want to create a file path. We need to do that to, in order to display that icon. So that file path is going to be equal file path. It's equal to, again, we use the application folder, app folder. We're not going to use this as a variable. App folder, which will work well as long as it's in brackets. Why does that work? If we look in the app folder, well, let's look at that. In the admin, we look under uh, here, general information. We have that app folder located right, I'm sorry, application settings right here, app folder. There it is right here. Okay, so we have it, and all we need to do is reference it inside the brackets. So continuing on, app folder, and what else is there? Our icons are located in a specific folder. So what folder do we replace for that? Well, that's located in the classes icon. So and, and then quotation marks, backslash, class, icons another backslash and what else and we need to know what it's located where is it located it's located right basically we can copy this located in the amish sheet paste it here and change this r it's located in r not f r so what does that mean inside our icons back in the admin right located in our scheduling settings right here classes and lessons here this is the file name right located in column ar that's what i want to create that full file path that's going to do it. So basically all we're going to do is we're going to combine this application settings along with the specific folder along with this file name. It's going to co complete that full file path and that'll be good for every single user. So now that we have that path, I do want to check to make sure it is accurate. So to do that, we can use if directory uh, again, the file path VB directory. In this case, if it equals empty, we can skip it equals empty then go to let's say skip icon skip because we're going to skip this icon if it's bad i don't want to go i don't want to exit the sub skip icon so down here we're going to go next and just call it skip icon and then colon okay so that's going to skip everything we can't add it if it has a problem if there's a bad file path we can't continue on so assuming that the 
file path is accurate, we can now insert it. So dot pictures, dot insert. What are we inserting? We're inserting that file path, file path. And then also what I want to do is I want to give it, of course, a name. And it's going to be equal to, in this case, we'll call it icon item. And then also I want the icon number too. I want icon number here. So that's it. So now once we have that, we can then focus on it. We've now created it, so we're focused on it. So with dot shapes, paste in that. We don't need the double quotes there. Paste in that. And now we can focus on that. So what do I want to do with it? The first thing I want to do is lock the aspect ratio. So equals, again, MSO true. So that's the first thing. I'm going to set a height on that. Maybe something right around 12. Height equals 12. We need a very specific height on that. Can't be bigger than that. I want to put a left position. Dot left position is going to be based on what? Based on that icon menu here. Based on this number right here, the icon menu. That shape here. That's where our left position is going to be placed on. So we're going to do that. Pasting that in there, it's going to be based on that icon number. The left position of that Plus, I'm going to add a little bit, plus two, let's say two, right? I don't want it exactly on the left side. I also want to, of course, we need the top position. So it's going to be the top position is going to be equal also to that. It's going to be based on the top position of that same button. We created right, the button there. Top position of that, again, not exactly on the top, so plus two. And then lastly, make sure it's visible, dot visible equals MSO true. So that's it for the icon. So now we just created the icon and we good. So that's going to place it directly there. And again, we also again need to add this. So I'm going to again copy this here, but I'm just going to make a small change. I also want to build out that shape group. Shape group, in this case, of course, it's not icon menu. It is this one here, icon item. So it's a slightly different, and but we do need to add the comma here. So the shape group equals the icon item plus the icon number and the comma. And that's going to build that out. Okay, also, we want to increment the icon number. So the icon, as we go, icon number is equal to the icon number plus one okay so we increment that and we go to the next okay that looks really good okay actually i'm gonna skip i think we, sh we still need to increment here we still need to increment even if there's no icon so i'm gonna put that above because i want this to be increment no matter what even if there was a bad file okay very good okay now the only thing that's left to do is take our shape group and actually create a group from it so but also what I want to do is I've got one, remember we keep adding a comma onto the end, so I got to remove the last comma because we're not going to be able to use that. So shape, so shape group is equal to the left, we just need to remove that, shape group, in this case the length of the shape group minus one, this is going to remove the last character, so we need to do that. So. There we go. So that's that's going to remove the last. So basically, we're going to take the left of the entire length, but we're going to subtract the entire length, and we're going to subtract one from it. So that's going to remove the last character. Once we have that, we can then create the shape array. So the shape array is equal to, we just need to split it based on that comma, which is now the delimiter. So you're going to use split, just like we did with the icons previously, shape group comma and then we're going to split it using that comma delimiter so once it's split we can then add that to the group so focusing on with dot shapes dot shapes this specific dot range going to range what is that range that range is going to be the shape array so we can get rid of this and create that shape array that's the shape array okay once we want to group them right so we're grouping them and of course, what do I want to do? I want to assign a name to that dot name. It's going to be that same name that we deleted before. So that's this name here, making sure that we get this one. This is the one that I want to delete. This is the one we deleted. Icon menu group, that's the name that I want to assign to it, equals that icon menu group. Once we have that, I also want to position that. Where do I want to position that? The dot top position is going to be equal to, or well, let's focus on the left. Left position is going to be equal to based on the last classes dot range and then this was going to be based on m21 m21 dot left i want the left position of that that's where i want to place and also i want to place the top position so next comes the top position dot top is going to be equal to dot top okay we just pasted that in there not just one equal on that all right so the last thing what i want to do is i want to assign a macro to that right remember when i select an icon i want something to run so i want that icon to appear so that's the macro that i want to do so when we assign a macro so dot on action 
equals, and then let's just place it in parentheses, select the icon. Okay, and width, that's it for that specific group. That's placed it, it's displayed, everything's good. And width, and then end sub. Okay, very good. Let's take a look and see how that is. We're gonna save our work, but when do we want this to display? When do I want this specific macro to run? I want it when a user makes a selection change on M21. When they go into the classes here, and they make a selection on this class icon, that's when I want it to appear. M20, excuse me, M20. So let's write in that selection change event right now. Inside the classes here, we're going to focus again on the selection change. We can go down here. Anywhere here is fine. If not, again, M21. M21 is nothing. Then build that icon. Run. And this is build icon menu. Okay, actually, this should be M20. All right, let's take a quick look over the code real quick. And then we'll go ahead and save our work. And then classes macros. Okay, so take a look at this icon row check our variables uh shape array let's fix that shape group is a variant last icon okay i think we're gonna go save our work okay while i remember i don't want to keep this as she one just before i forget this one we want classes database so i'm going to rename this while i remember classes we're going to do that in just a moment now okay classes database that's been renamed all right so let's continue on let's go ahead and select it off and click on the classes icon wow there we go it just got built nice okay so we see here classes and of course we haven't assigned the macro the macro is assigned but the macro is not doing anything clicking off it but what i want to do is when i click off it i basically want to delete everything right i just want to delete this if i click anything else i want to delete this so that way it's, it disappears when we click anything else let's get that done right now of course we know already the name of this group and i'm just going to copy that and i want to delete it when they select anything else as opposed to hiding it so here again under the classes right just right under where we have the color palette of course is the color palette we're simply hiding but in this case if shapes in this case icon menu group dot visible equals true in that case i want to delete it right true then shapes icon menu group dot delete okay if for some it should all if it doesn't exist it could create an error so again let's go ahead and wrap that around uh on air resume next just in case right and then on air go to zero after that and then but otherwise it should so now basically so as soon as we click something else see it's gone right here it doesn't exist i'm going to click it here and it's rebuilt okay now what i want to do is when i click something i want to automatically place the icon inside m20 and i want to place the file the file name inside n20 so let's do that right now let's write that macro right now okay and that's going to be called the subclass select icon okay we have that right here in the classes but there's nothing in it right now so we're going to actually write it so the icon that's going to be located we're going to call that um, class icon i'm going to call it class icon so i want to delete any icon that might be there already so that's the first thing we're going to do if it's there so again with classes and then on air resume next because it might not exist dot shapes i'm going to call it this is the name class icon give it that dot delete right we want to delete it and then on air go to zero okay just like we did before all right so the first thing we have to i want the icon number i've got to know what number it is if i'm going to be extracting this right i know that this is icon one two and three so i need to get what i need to do is i need to get the icon i really need the icon name because i can build the file path so i know if let's take a look at back into that and let's take a look at some of the names that we've decided so we know this shape is icon menu one if they click on the menu if they click on if they click on the icon let's uh, launch it again if they click on the icon itself it's called icon item now i've used this unique name for both very very specifically look at that each one each one icon item along with icon menu both have eight characters right both have eight characters before the number if i take the first eight characters out what's that going to leave me with it's going to leave me with the number so that's all i need to do i need to figure out what they've clicked on we're using application caller take out the first eight characters regardless if they click on the button or they click they're all assigned to the same macro or they click on the icon extract remove the first eight characters it's going to leave you with the number and we can't just take the last character because what if there's like 15 icons then we're going to need two characters right so we need to account for that so what we can do is instead of extracting the last character because there might be two all we need to do is actually ex remove the first eight so that's just what we're going to do so how do we do that so we can use that so the icon 
number, which we've already defined, I believe, up here, making sure icon number here is long. That's what I want. Icon number is going to be equal to the right, right, because I only want the right portion, the right of what? The application caller. And the application caller, again, is the shape that they've actually selected. And so we've got the application caller, comma, what else? Now what I want to do is I want the length of the application dot caller. So I want the full length of that minus eight. So what that's going to do is remove everything else, but it's going to remove all the first eight characters. And it's going to leave us with whatever's to the right of that. So in this case, it's going to leave us with exactly the icon number, whether it's one digit or two digits, either way or three digits or however many. OK, so now we've got that the length of the application is called minus eight. So we're good. Now all I need to do is place inside n20.range inside n20. I want to put that file name. 20 dot value is equal to admin dot range ar ar and the icon number but it's not just the icon number we need to add something plus eight why are we adding a because the first one appears on row nine dot value and i'll show you that right now so the first one our insider admin right our first one's going to appear on row nine right so our first one's going to appear on row nine right here so if we are actually going to get that all we need to do is ar and if we, for example, if we chose the first icon, it would be 8 plus 1, which is going to be AR9. So that's all I want. So AR9. So we've got that. We've got that inside now. And try. And now what I want to do is I want to delete the menu. So we've got the full file path. So all we need to do is just delete the, actually, we don't need to do that. We can do that in the next step where I'm going to delete it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run another macro and I'm going to, that macro is going to actually display it. So all we really are focused on here is putting that file name inside N20. Next, we're going to run a macro called class show icon. That's going to actually display the icon based on whatever is inside N20. So class show icon. Okay, so that's it. So which is the next macro right here? So let's write that. And that's going to be based on, of course, what's located here. So inside this, let's write the n sub to this. We need that. So we've got that. Now, what are we going to do? So again, of course, with classes, of course, that's the one we're working on. And of course, I want to make sure that we're now we're going to ready to delete the icon. And if it doesn't exist, of course, dot shapes class icon. Of course, it's called class icon. Okay, now we've got the class icon, and I'm going to delete that, right? And then on error, go to zero. Okay, now we're ready to build the path. So first of all, we want the icon name. What is that icon name? Icon name is located in N20. We know that already. So all we need to do is just simply copy this, and then equals, and then we're good to go on that. So that's going to set the icon name. That's not the full file path. It's just the icon name. But we need to build that file path now. So what is that file path going to be? File path, which is already defined as a string, is going to be equal to... Again, we already have it up here pretty much. All we need to do is just copy it up here at folder class icons. And we can just do that plus the file name. So we just copy that down here, paste it here, and what? And the icon name. Okay, that's going to build out the entire file path. Now all we need to do again is just check to make sure that it is a good file path. And we can do that with VB directory just as we did up here. Just to check, again, we can do that here and paste that here. So again, all we're going to do is going to check, and then we can write down. In this case, we could probably just then exit the sub. I guess it's fine. Nothing else to do here if uh, we haven't. OK, so continuing on, now that we know we have a correct file path, all we need to do is, again, is simply insert it just as we've done before. So again, dot pictures it doesn't come up on IntelliSense, pictures dot insert file path we've done this before a few times dot name what is the name again we know it's going to be that class icon class icon okay and now we're ready to work with it dot shapes class icon actually with dot shape with dot shapes okay so we were going to focus on that and now we're going to place it directly inside so what are we going to do with that let's see with dot shapes class and then the Quotation mark here. Okay, so focus on that. What are we going to do? We're going to place the left position. Well, where is it going to go? Of course, we want to place it directly inside M20. Okay, but to do that, right, we want to first of all, I want to lock the aspect ratio equals true because I don't want it to change MSC true. Then what I want to do is I want to set the specific height of that, right, something because we don't want it to go anything higher than, let's say, 12. So we go to 12. Now I want to place the left position. What it's going to be, it's going to be equal to M20 equals, and i got to call out classes again because we're inside the with shapes. Classes.range M20. 
dot left, but not exactly, maybe a little bit away, maybe plus 10, right? Because I want to, I don't want to put it directly on the left side. And then dot top is also going to equal classes, dot range, again, M20, dot top, and then maybe not exactly on the top, maybe plus 2. Okay, and the last thing is dot visible. It should be visible already, but equals MS true. Okay, just in case it's not. Okay, so now we've placed that, that icon exactly it. We're good to go. Nothing else we need to do here. Just clean it up a little bit, get rid of those extra spaces. We don't need them. And all right, we're going to get saving our work. Now let's see what happens when we click on the classes and we select something else. And we need to dot application dot call or not calculate close close I know everybody saw that but I didn't everybody but me saw that and then icon number this one ends in a B right it's a number so we want to make sure we end that that's correct okay continue on all right let's see okay the last thing very nice now we have it there I like it okay so let's change it but but also what I want to do is notice that when I click on the cell it launches but what about when I click on the icon nothing happens why don't we assign a macro to this icon and we can assign the same macro that we did when we select the cells. And that is the macro that's right here. So basically, show icon list. So this is what I want to do. So now, again, when we assign it, so show icon, this particular macro here, all we need to do, this icon that we just, we can also assign a macro to this. How do we do that? Just dot on action equals, and then just paste in the macro. Now, when we assign it, we can get rid of it. Let, let's add another one. Let's add another one. Now, when we click on this macro, there we go. Perfect. And we're making sure that everything's empty in there. So we select on it, history, select on it, thing. Okay, the only other thing is when I select something, I want this to go away. Right? I don't want, I want to delete this icon menu group. I just want to, there's no reason when we select it that we, we, we completed it. So we should delete this automatically. So let's do just that. So I'm going to copy this group. And once we've done it, we can delete this specific, once we've shown the icon, but actually why don't we show it right down here. This is where I want to delete after the after we select something. So dot shapes, icon menu group, dot delete. Okay, very good. So now when we select something, right, now whether we select an icon or whether we select, it's automatically deleted. Perfect. And when we want to change the color, we can just change the color and slide over here so we can see the full color palette. Good. Now when we select the tab, right, when we select the tab, now all we see is the icon and we don't see anything else and we just see the colors. Perfect. I really like that. All right. Good. Let's get this functioning so we can actually save and load a class. Okay. We're just about all set up for that. I'm going to left justify this and we'll also add the notes in here. Test notes so we can test every field to make sure that they're working right and also we need to add some conditional formatting to these but we'll take care of students probably next week as we enroll because we need to add additional database for this so we're not going to focus too much on that i do want to get these classes to be able to save and to be able to load when we select on it so that's important before we complete and i'll let you go here so into the developers we're going to go back into there and we're going to focus on again the save so now that we have all of this we can add additional macros here so we're going to call this class save sub class save okay? and then also class new right sub class new and also class load so we're going to need that sub class and because we have data mapping it's going to be a lot easier and a lot faster sub class load so those are the macros we're just going to focus on right now saving new and load and cancel new is very simple it's a one line of code Okay, there's just a few requirements before saving a class. Obviously, we need a class name, that's important. And also, I wanna make sure that we're not having a duplicate class name. This is going to help us here. But I do need to change this. We went over this again, but I wanna go under the class name, right? I wanna change this to class name. And obviously, it's not b 7 is the row, which is good. So basically, in this, if we review, if it's a new, B7 meaning it's new, there's nothing, if it's a new, all I'm gonna do is look for a match. If there's a match, if there's no error, then the match has been found. Basically, it's looking up for a match and not B7, right, B, not B17, is looking for a match located right here inside the class name, H7, that's what we're looking up. And the same thing here, H7, that's the one we're looking up. If it's found, right, there's no error, error equals false, that means it's true. However, if it is an existing, and I'm going to update this formula a little bit because I think I found a little bit better of a formula. Why don't we use count if, right? So if B7 does not equal empty, that means we are going to simply have an existing, we're focused on an existing record. I'm going to use a count if right here. So count if 
what am I counting? I'm going to be basically counting all of the names, right, our class names, so we're going to focus on that, and it's going to be based on this criteria. If that is more than one, more than one, why? Because it's in, there's already one because it's an existing, then it's true, otherwise it's false. So basically, you can just kind of probably update the other ones. I like it a little bit better because match can be a little bit tricky based on the order. Count if it's also simpler too. So count if class name, H7, if it's greater than one, then it, then it is also a duplicate, true, otherwise false, and otherwise false, okay? Click okay, and let's just update that inside here. We don't need that extra parentheses here. But we do need it after the and here. So there, in that case, we need it. And here as well, we do need that extra one here. Okay, good. So now we're good. And now we've got it false. If we add another one, this will go to true. So we want to make sure two things. I want to make sure that H7 contains a value. And I also want to make sure that B13 is not true. So let's write that up right now inside the first macro. So with classes, if dot range H7 dot value equals empty, then we need to let the user know message box please make sure to enter a class name before saving exit sub and again the other thing we also want to make sure b13 if dot range b13 dot value equals true then we say message box please make sure to enter a unique class name this class name has already been used okay good we're good to go exit sub nothing we can do if we have duplicate class names we want to keep them unique always okay so we've got those two caveats and i'll just write here um class empty class name we'll just do empty class name and then we'll write down here some notes here memo duplicate class name okay so we've got that now that everything's required now we're ready to go we need to determine the class row and the class row is going to be the first available this is only for saving new we're only going to run this we save new otherwise updating in this case updating we're going to do automatically on any change we're going to update it so we don't have to worry about this is only for new records because it's new we know the class row is going to be the first available so the class row is equal to the first available one based on the classes database classes database you want to make sure click that dot make sure that telesense comes up that means we've got the sheet name right okay so it's the first available one plus one the first available row first available class row once we have that the columns of course are variable we're going to loop through the columns but the first thing i want to do also we're not going to loop through a so column a is our id so let's place that right in there i want to do two things with the id first thing is i want to place that id in column a here the first column here i'm going to place that i'm going to remove that because we're going to be adding it i'm going to place it here the second thing i'm going to do is also take that id in fact we're getting it from the next id we're pulling it from here so i'm going to place it in two places the first of which is going to be in the database second of which is going to be right here inside b5 so let's do that right now for the class id so we can say here dot range b5 is equal to dot range and then we're going to basically basically the b5 is going to come directly up from b9 so b9 is the next class id we're going to place that right here b9 and that's just because class id we're also going to place it of course directly inside we're going to copy this and put it directly inside a in the database so so classes database dot range a and the class row dot value equals and we're just going to paste it again class id okay so now that we have that we can ready to write the rest of our data using our data mapping so for we can start at column two class column equals making sure we do have that already class column as a variable right here class column equals two we've already taken care of column number one we're going to go all the way to column i believe 26. let's take a look it ends on the last character in z so that is going to be 26. okay so we can go all the way to 26 and so from two to 26 so for class column goes two to 26. close our loop next class column okay so once we have that what all we need to do is in a single line of code placing our data so classes database dot cells and what is it it's going to be our class row dot class column dot value we've done this before equals and basically what's it going to equal based on the dot range what is the based on the class c what is the range where can we find that range we can find it right here in row one so classes database dot cells right and then it cares row one and then the column is variable so the class column 
Okay, dot value, dot value. So this value is going to be that range. We went over this a few times already. Class said this is the value. So map data to to database. Okay, so that's it. That's all we have to do. Now, of course, what we have, we have a few different shapes that we need to set in our classes, right? We have two different shapes here. Let's review the names by going here. And we have, let's get rid of this color palette, header group we don't need, this header group, this menu we don't need, existing class group. I want to display that and I want to hide the new class group. So that's what I want to do with those shapes. And also, that's it. So let's take a look at that under here. So here, dot shapes, new class group. I want to hide that one. It's no longer new. Dot visible equals MSO false. And then I want to display the other one, dot shapes, existing class group, dot visible equals MSO true. Okay, I want to show that, right? And that's going to show those groups. Okay, let's take a look. Let's save that. Okay, I also know we're going to need to run another macro, which we haven't built yet. And basically, what that macro is going to do is load the class's list, right? So once we save a class, we want that class to show up here in this class list. So that's really important. So we're going to, that's going to be a macro. So we'll, we'll call that macro something like, call that sub, uh, let's just start out with class, and then load class list, okay? So that's going to be a sub that we'll have to write. And then we'll write new. That looks good. Okay, so I'm going to run this macro, although it's not going to do anything, of course, once we save it, until we actually put something in there. That's going to be it for now. We may do additional macros, like sort them and things like that, but that's going to be good for now. Of course, we also, later on, we have to add in scheduled lessons and queries and attachments, but we'll get to that. That's not going to be this week. Okay, so continuing on. So that looks good. Let's save our work again. Always save, save, save. And I'm going to take that. We want to display that. So let's go ahead and hide that. I'm going to take the existing, the new class group, and I'm going I'm going to hide the existing. And what that's going to do is going to show the save class and the cancel new. So I'm going to take the macro that we just sent. I'm going to assign it to this button, and I'm going to hold down the control this. Right click, assign the macro. And of course, that's class. So we're going to go down here, class, save. Click OK. And so we want to make sure that we've got no database row. That's correct. We're going to get rid of this class ID. We don't need that anymore. And because it's a brand new one, and uh, select a class row. This is fine. That's not going to issue. OK, the next class ID. So basically what we want to do is going to assign it to the first available row here once we click Save, unless we have some, some bugs or issues that we'll fix. OK, click Save Class. All right, let's take a look in the database. Mm, click on that. We'll go. We'll review the data. We want to make sure that everything got put in right. Class ID, English, teacher, subject, term, from date, to date, fourth grade, room, start time. This format's fine. We don't need. An, I don't need a format in this. It's fine. It's accurate, and that's all that matters. We don't necessarily need it. The same thing with duration. We don't need these formatted here. Nobody's going to see this database. As long as they're accurate, that's an important fact. I prefer to keep them in this format. Uh, unless we're checking some data. Certificate award grade C, afternoon class type looks good. And then we have our individual days. That looks good. We want to make sure that we've got our icon name saved, correct? Make sure that is correct. And also the color, good. We didn't put any data in the Mac student. Okay, that looks perfect. That's great. That's exactly what I want. Why don't we get that class loaded up here? So what I want to do is I want to load that class and I also want to actually load the names in. Okay, very good. So back into classes. Now what I want to do is I want to clear all this data out. So why don't we do that? But we do need to check the best way to clear out this data is actually to create a named range, just as we've done in the other ones. But we do have to watch out for these merge cells. They can be a little bit tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the control, selecting all the cells that I want to clear out. So I'm going to clear this, 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 okay? Holding down every single cell that I want cleared out inside our data. So it's going to be here, 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 the entire merge cell, all of these, and all of these, and I want to. I'm going to add. Remember, I'm going to add N20 and N21 onto that. Okay, so we'll remember that because I'm not going to select it. So I've already selected everything, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click Class Data here and assign that named range. And of course, remember we have to add in N20 and N21 to that. So we'll do that, and that's no problem because we have to check it anyways. Again, just to double check, we're going to click. We're going to type in Class Data. And make sure everything else is selected the way we had it. Good, that's exactly the way we want it, okay? Now, we, we do need to go in. Anytime you have name, uh, let's say, merge cells and something else, we really need to double check it. So we're gonna go into formulas, name range, and we do, we'll do. we have to edit it a little bit. So click on the class data, and of course, we have to add in the two that I told you about, N20 and N21. So we've got classes here. Now let's take a look at some of our merge cells. So we've got here, 
L7 through M7. So we got to update that. So again, let's take a look inside here in class L7, but we need to bring it all the way through M7. So I'm going to copy this and put down the colon here and then paste that here and then make sure I change it to M7. M7, very, very important. We need to clear out everything. And we need to do the same exact thing for L9 through M9. So again, we're going to look for that L9 here and we're going to do a colon and then paste it in here and make sure that that is M9, M and the 9. Okay, we need to do that for each of the merge cells to make sure that we have, and then we're going to add on those two, two that I had mentioned to you. Okay, so again, we have another one here on room. Room is going to be J11 through K11. J11 through K11. Here's J11 here. So what I'm going to do is copy that, hit the colon, and then paste it. And then, of course, we're going to make it K11. Also, next up, we've got a, uh, one or two more. So let's take a look at, we have the notes here. And we have, that's going to be it, the notes, it's going to be G19 all the way through K21, G19 through K21. So let's look for G19 here, and we found it right about here, and we need to, we can just paste in, we can paste in what we have already, and just change it to K21, K and then 21. Okay, because we want to make sure. And then, of course, we had to add on the two that we were talking about. Remember, we'll add those again. It was all the way through N21. So we'll do N20 and N21. So we can copy this here, put a comma in here, and then just paste that in here, and then put the colon N, and then let's just paste it in here. So I'm going to change this to N20. It's okay if we use put comma or colon in this case because they're adjacent cells. N20 all the way through N21. Okay, and then check that, make sure it's there. Tab it over, make sure everything looks right. Let's take a look at that. This is very easy to mess up. I've messed it up many, many times, so don't worry. It just takes a while with your merge cells, but it is really convenient when you're clearing it out, right? These merge cells are very tricky. If we get just one little one wrong, it'll bug out. So that looks good. Of course, we're going to check it through the code. So that's what we're going to use when we add new. So why don't we go into the VBA and just check it out and see now inside the classes module here, we're going to go return back to that and start with this add new. So this new one or an add new, new either one. Let's do add Add new. I like that better. Okay, so of course with the classes sheet, and the first thing what we want to do is make sure that we set the class load to true. Any changes here, I want to update in the database. Any change. However, not when we're clearing things out, not when we're loading. So I want to set before to true, set before to true, and then back to false. And I'll show you why that's important a little bit later on. So dot range B4 equals true. Set class load to true. And I'm going to copy that and just going to paste it. Always when we want to undo something, at the end of the macro, I need to reverse it. So I'm going to change it to false and then change this to false. And all the code we're going to do is going to be written in between there. Okay, so that's going to ensure that we don't uh, overwrite things in the database because any update we make, we want it updated the database, but not the kind of update where we're clearing it out. So the first thing, next thing we want is dot range. In this case, we're going to call it class data. That's the named range that we were just working on. Class data, not dot value, but dot clear content, dot clear contents. Okay, so once we clear the contents out, we want to make sure that if there's a class icon, I want to delete that, but there might not be. So on a resume next, dot shapes class icon, right? We've got to clear that out too. Dot dot delete. Right? We're deleting that. And then on error go to zero in case it doesn't. Okay, and we're going to reset that bug. Also, what I want to do is I want to set that default into your color. Remember, we've cleared it out, but we should really clear out this color, maybe back to white. So M20 through M21 is going to be equal to white. I want to change it back M20. So let's write that, reset that color dot range M20 through M21 dot value, of course. But in this case, it's going to be dot interior color, interior dot color equals and what's that color white i've already memorized it but i've got it over here actually and memorize it nearly memorize it the white is i'm going to use one six seven seven two one five that's the color for white if you run the run a macro you can see that record a macro you can see that as well okay so it's one six seven seven two one five that is the interior color for white. So we're setting that to white. Also, what I want to do is I want to reverse these things here, right? It's new. So I'm basically, I'm going to take these, but reverse them. So this one's going to be C true. I want to show the new class group. This one's going to be false. We're going to hide the existing group of button sets. 
Okay, B4 set to false. Okay, that looks good. We're good to go. I'm going to save it. It could easily, if there's a bug, it's going to be on this specific clear contents because of those merged cells. So if you get that, it's very, very common. So all we need to do is just then assign the macro here. We're going to assign the macro and then class new here or add new here and then click OK. OK, saving our work, especially when you use clear contents or anything like that, always save your work before running the macro. Click new class. OK, it looks good, except uh, my white number was wrong. I think there was three sevens. We added two. OK, so let's do that. Let's run that macro again, make sure it returned to white. Ah, that looks much better, doesn't it? OK, good. I really, really like that. That's looking really good. So we've cleared it out. We've done all, all of our work now. All we need to do is just load it up. Now what I want to do is when I enter an ID here, or when I select on a class here, I want that class, all that information to load back in. I want all this database information to load directly back in here. And we're going to get this duplicate name. That's going to be unconditional formatting. Let me double check this to see if I, if this goes to true, let's take a look at this. I want to see if that's going to work. Classes database English fall. I'm going to copy this here, check it out. And then what we're going to do is going to put that in here. And let's see, what well, we have to save it to the database, right? Before it's saved, it's measuring, because as soon as we change it on an existing one, or as soon as we save it, we want to make sure. So we'll double check that. I'll make an update to this code. If it's new, right, we're going to check it. So we need to do one more thing. What I need to do is when we click new, I need to make sure this class ID is also cleared out. B5 must be cleared out. So let's update that. Also, so let's do that right now. Anywhere, anywhere in here is fine, dot range b5 dot clear contents there might be a few more clear contents such as the search one probably the search one we could add it here too we could probably clear this out on new m5 as well let's add that in too as well so b5 and m5 clear m5 okay so i want to clear that out and i want to run that macro again to make sure it's working fine and we're going to run that and good so we're good so now we've cleared it out and now let's take a look if I paste that in there. Now we went to true. Why is that? Because it knows that there's no class ID. It's no, it knows it, but we don't need it applied to this. So we only need it. So I'm going to go into the home, manage rules, and I'm just going to apply it to H7 only, which is fine. Click OK and apply. So we're using consistency throughout it. Duplicate name found. We could actually we could change this to class name in this case, duplicate class name found. And we could probably left justify that here. Okay, I like that really good. Okay, it's looking good, so it's not going to allow us to save it. If we try to save it, it's not going to let us make sure to enter a unique class name. Good. So let's get this load macro working right now, and then I'm going to let you go. Okay, back into the VBA editor, class load. This is the last one, so we're going to focus on that. Again, with classes, and then we can focus on, we're going to make sure, we need to make sure that B7, we need to make sure that B7 contains a value. If B7 doesn't, we know that we don't have a proper row. So B7 is critical. So let's update that. So if dot range B7 dot value equals empty, then message box, please enter or because there's two or select a correct class and that's it because they we're not sure if they're going to be selecting it or entering it because there's two different ways exit sub right without the class without the row and that we don't have it so the class row is going to be actually equal to b7 class row is equal to the range b7 and also we set the row so that's a class row okay once we have the class row i also want to make sure that we uh re delete any class icon again we've done it here already but i want to make sure that there's just in case there's no class icon in case we load it so first thing we do is just copy this as we've done here as we have done here and just paste it down here so removing any class icon that might exist next up i want to set the class load to true just as we've done here on the add new we want to do the same thing here so class load to true and also we're going to set it back to false here so before it ends going to set it back to false because change is made we want saved automatically once we have that okay now we can ready to load it so i also want to clear any search field i want to clear this one m5 just m5 not b5 but it's easy to to paste it in and then modify it so i want to clear m5 m5 is the search field i want to clear anything that because we know we're ready to load it let the user put in a new search if they want to okay so once we have that we're ready to load in all the information again we can copy this and we just need to paste it back in here and we're going to paste it right down here except we're just going to make a few changes so for example we're not loading in uh the information into the class database we're now taking the information and reversing it so i'm going to take this here this part here and i'm just going to bring it to the front of our 
command here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this equals. So basically, it's the reverse of what we did before. Map to database. So now bring from database. OK, so we're going to set the class load. We also need to take these here, these exactly just as we've done on the existing. Actually, the existing, when we shave the shapes, we want new to be hidden, existing to be shown, just as we've done previously before. You can paste that right in here. OK, also, what else do I want to do? I want to know if there is a value inside our N20. If there's a value inside N20 after we brought in all the data, we should show that icon. So why don't we do that? Let's go ahead and check that out. So if we can write it down, right about down here after we brought in the data, if dot range N20 dot value does not equal empty, then all we need to do is again show the icon. Remember, we that's why we want a separate macro for this. So not show icon list down here, not select icon, but show the icon. Then I need to run this macro, show the icon. So bring that up here. So we know that N20, and let's go back up to the load here. Then run this macro, display icon. Also, we need to display the colors too, right? So let's do that if dot range N21, N21 value does not equal empty. Then I want to show, display those colors, color those specific cells, the color of the class. Then show the colors else. But what if it's not? And I want to show it to white. I want to bring them to white. So we know what white is. It's that triple seven one. I'm going to copy those. So if, if it's empty, we're going to color them white. If it's not, I'm going to color them whatever the value is inside N21. So interior color, going to give it this value. So basically, here we are. If N21 doesn't equal empty, that means there's a color stored in it. I'm going to take cells M20, M21, I'm going to give them the color, whatever the color is, the color cells. Uh, and then otherwise, color white. So if there's no value, color white. OK, good. I like that. That looks pretty good. OK, let's save our changes and take a look at how we're going to do. OK, so now let's try to load in. So but wait, basically what I want to do is when I enter an ID here or I select something here, I want it to load in. So how do we do that? Well, first thing, we need to load the classes in order to properly load that. So let's write that small macro up right now. So we make that change. I want it to load in. So that's the class load list. That's the last full macro that we need to run. So it's a very, very simple macro. So let's get that done. Well, the first thing we want to do is uh, clear any classes that might be here. So all the way from E5 down through F and then a large row, we will clear it out. So that's going to be based on class. so classes dot range E5 through F and then 999 dot clear contents. I want to clear everything at clear contents, clear existing classes, clear existing classes. And we already wrote that. So now we're going to focus on the classes database. So with classes database making sure we have it okay good that looks correct so the first thing I want to do is determine the last row last row is equal to the last row of that because we're going to run an advanced filter if the last row is less than four then exit sub that means there's no data so we can't run it so assuming that we have data we can run our advanced filter so I'm going to use a uh, our auto hotkey to make that a lot quicker for us. And we're going to focus. Obviously, our data starts in row three and it goes all the way to Z. Yes, it does, but we don't necessarily need to go there. All we're doing is running an advanced filter based on basically just uh, we're going to go the class ID, the class name we're going to need, and I need the two dates. So we're going to go all the way to G. Let's just go to there. G. And where are what are our criteria? Remember, we built that criteria already, so we have it here. It's A C two through A D three. So A C two through A D three. Okay, and what about our results? Our results are going to come into A E two through A F two. Those are where our results. A E two through A. How lucky can we be? Okay, that's already right. Perfect. So now that we have that, we can then determine the last results row let's double check our variable to make sure we have it right up here it's all the way at the top here last results row that's what i want and we're going to make sure that that's going to be based on a required field we're going to use class name under ae to get our last results row equals and then ae and then it's going to get us our last results row. if the last results row is less than three then exit sub right there's no data. Okay, assuming that there is data, all we need to do is then bring in the data. So again, classes dot range. In this case, we're going to do our range is E5 through F and what? And the last 
results row, but our results row start in row three, except here they're starting in row five, so I need to add two. Dot value equals the database dot, in this case, basically dot range, AE3, A, AE3, all the way through AF, and then the last results row. And the last results row. Okay, make sure I got it here too. All right, good. So again, anytime you're not sure if you variable, put them in lowercase like this, right? If they change to uppercase, you know you've got the right variable. Okay, good. So we've got that. Everything looks good. So that's going to load up. So that's pretty easy, very easy macro to write. So just uh, copy that. I'm going to save again, save our work. And I'm going to run that here and make sure that we get our effort. Last transaction, that should be the last row, not transaction row. I always forget to update that, but that's fine. Okay, continuing on, and then the last results row, so we still mess it up. Last result LT, type too fast. Okay, continuing on. All right, that looks good. Let's take a look inside our classes here and make sure we have a single, perfect. We got, we just have a single class, which is fine. Let's add another one. Let's do spring and make sure that that changes automatically. Good, I like that. Assign teacher, we'll do a John Fred. Subject is English, and we're not going to fill all these term in information out. We still have to do this automated, but we're kind of running way over time. I'm going to save this class, but what I want to do is I want to load that automatically. Automatically. Notice when we saved it, so that macro that we just wrote, load class list, as soon as we save it, I want to run it. So run that. So I want to put that load class, load class list. I have it, but it didn't work. Let's see why not. Probably because of the dates. So we do need the dates in here. Let me add that in. So notice there that, uh, let's take a look, because we have the dates, classes database, because it's missing database, right? Anything less than that. But what if we show all? Let's do that. Let's run that macro. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this macro here that's load classes. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to sign that macro to that button here so it automatically updates. So when I right click that, assign the macro, paste it in there, click OK. So now when I click it again, it's going to load it up. All right, let's add a two date. We still need that two date in there. Let's go ahead and update the database on that two date. I want to make sure we update. We're going to need at least a date. So let's do uh, 320. Any dates will work to 520. Okay, so now we have that. Now let's go ahead and update that. Click on the show, unhide. Now we got both. Perfect. That's just what I want. Now, last thing I do is when I select on this, let's load. I'm going to write that macro and write that little line of code. Then I'm going to let you go because it's a long training. Classes, but this series, we've got so much to cover. So selection change when we make a selection change on a specific I want to change make a selection change on e5 all the way through F and down e5 and forget about F because that's we're not going to be able to e5 all the way down but F must contain a value then I want the class to load so again this is based on selection change we're here in selection change if not e5 okay all the way down from e5 all the way through e999 nothing and range right F and the target dot row dot value does not equal empty, then what do I want to do? Then I want to load in. But before I load it in, before I run that macro, I want to take whatever is located in F and I want to place it directly inside B5. That's going to load it up automatically. So range B5 dot value equals range F and the target dot row it's going to load that dot value it's going to load the id load class id now when we load it in class underscore load now it's going to run the automatic load when we select it on them. okay all right let's take a look at that make sure that right save that so now when i select it it's going to load it up there we go Perfect. Okay, that's just what I like. I'm going to leave you with that because I think we've caught, caught over everything here. If I click on general information, again, we have there. Let's update that. I want to make sure this, when we, we're going to show you, I'm going to show you how to save these automatically when we do that. We'll save them automatically in next week and a few updates adding students. Thank you so much for sticking with us on this extra long training. It's an incredible series. You're going to learn new things every week. If you do appreciate these trainings, just subscribe, comment below. Don't forget to click like. And of course, if you want 175 of these workbooks for just 37 cents a piece, I got an incredible promotion for you. The 175 workbook zip file for just $66. Pick that up. I'll include the links down below. All right. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week for part 10 of the School Manager.